I'm back with Andy Slavitt to discuss some of the previous keynotes. Andy, Lori Glimpshire with Dana-Farber boldly stated that this is a defining moment for social justice and healthcare in America. We see the glaring disparity surrounding COVID, but focusing on cancer care, how can we scale the work that Dana-Farber is doing around the democratization of care at the regional clinic level so that we can further close the gap between the haves and the have-nots? Well, I'll tell you, I was pretty moved by that statement. I thought it really captured um, the way a lot of us are beginning to understand the healthcare system. And you're right, it's not just in COVID, it's not even just in cancer. Um, it's how um, young kids with trauma um, are treated, it's how mental health access works, it's how uh, cardiac conditions work. And look, we have an enormous opportunity. And the opportunity is as we move forward with the vaccines we were talking about earlier, we have opportunities to do outreach into communities where we can do things like blood pressure cuff and screening, cancer tests and screening. Um, it's, and it starts with diagnostics. But here's what I would say, and um, to be maybe equally provocative, it's each one of our jobs to fight against racism. It's no longer good enough, I think, and we're all realizing this, for us and our companies to say we're not racist. That is not good enough. What we have to do is fight structural racism every place we see it. And I think that applies to every single one of us in every single element of healthcare. That's very well said. So kind of switching to the, the next session, we'll speak about Bruce Bursard, similar path he, he mentioned a lot about their SDOH initiatives. He also mentioned some programs to combat loneliness and also focusing a lot on home health. So all really wonderful initiatives, but what else can payers be doing to further care delivery in the right direction? Well, I love it when we're having conversations about people and people in their lives instead of people as patients or people as consumers or people as in, in some way um, interacting with our healthcare system. So in the next decade for the healthcare system to really be there for people, uh, we're gonna have to get a lot closer to understanding how they live. People's lives are complicated and messy, particularly if they're low income, particularly if they're racial minorities or live in rural communities, particularly if they live in certain zip codes. And those messy lives are the things that prevent people from taking their medication, going to the follow-up doctor visit, um, getting to appointments, and you know, we used to, and some people still describe those people as non-compliant. You still hear that expression. Well, non-compliant um, is an expression we ought to ban from our lexicon because what it basically says is um, those people are not doing what we want them to do. And in fact, we have to do something quite the opposite. As Bruce was saying, we have to make it easier for people to get the care they need. We have to bring care to them, to their homes, to comfortable settings, sometimes virtually, but often not, oftentimes just connecting with people as they live. When we do that, I think we're gonna to start to reduce the disparities that we talked about a little earlier. That's a really important point. I'm glad you brought that up. So we'll be back, Andy, in just a bit, and we'll chat a little bit about the next session that I'll speak about. So everyone, next up, we have a fireside chat with Dr. Stephen Hahn, the commissioner of the FDA. We'll be right back after with Andy to recap. Enjoy.